slides on here. So while he's preparing the slides, who here feels like you can make what you can imagine? Some people, yeah? So they're like, yes, we can make it. Can I hear somebody do that? Maybe we can make it. I hope we can make it. I really believe that there is so much creative potential in this room that if we really got together, we can make something amazing. Who believes that? Yeah. 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 Who believes that we've got some good electrical engineers up in her? What about some really amazing software designers? Yeah. And shout out to all the hardware people? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, the big question that I have is when you can make anything, what are you going to make? Rockets. Everything. <laughs> Things to make the world better. Things to make the world better. But how do you figure that out? Isn't that hard? It's like, what are you going to just think about the world? Hey, what a boy, man, Ann Arbor in the house, in the, his house. All right, so uh, I guess you've you figured out one thing about me. I'm from the Midwest, and I'm not big away. Detroit love. And uh, another thing about me is I'm brown. I don't know if you noticed. I'm from, uh, my parents are from Iraq. I was born in Evanston, Illinois, and my slides are up. This is my hello. And that was my question. I wanted to fig ask you guys, when we can make anything, what do we make? And I have, uh, I've come up with this idea because five years ago, literally five years ago to this day, I flew from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Cairo, Egypt to do a pop-up hackerspace with people that I met online. And I was like, we need to make a movement to go global. It was uh, more Western five years ago. It, there, it wasn't spread over China in the house. Eric Pan, Seed Studio, these, these kinds of places were just beginning to go global. And so I felt like I was in this interesting position where I spoke Arabic, um, I spoke English, and I had access to something that I felt would be really amazing to share in the middle of the Arab Spring, when people were getting together in communities to try to take control of their futures, more, more politically. And I thought we could take control more tangibly, because open source hardware addresses physical needs. And it was such an amazing idea, and I was really excited to go. And uh, five years later, here I am in the Middle East. I decided that I would leave San Francisco and go to, how do I click? The right arrow. The right arrow. Okay. Woohoo! Does that work? Ah, okay, good. Oh, well, one second, one second, bro. Okay. So, um, what do you guys think of when you think of the Middle East? Pyramids. Pyramids, that's awesome. Falafel? You guys are amazing! You guys must not be on Facebook at all. You guys are super productive. You guys got, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, <laughs> the classics. Uh, the kind of Middle East that I see when I look on the news is full of bombs, political unrest, violence, and all of my friends living there. And so what happened was four years ago, five years ago, I started working in the Middle East got really excited about doing this stuff, uh, was working in San Francisco, and this is Beirut. Um, but they're not, the videos aren't playing. Oh, and this is also Beirut. So Beirut is a beautiful place. There is a lot of amazing history, there's beautiful architecture, and uh, remnants from a civil war that never really ended, along with a bunch of crises that are coming up. So this is one of the problems in Beirut. This is the trash crisis. About a year ago, the government in Lebanon was like, huh, I guess our landfill filled up. And people were like, so where does the trash go? And the government was like, I don't know. Why don't you figure it out? <laughs> and so local governments were charged with figuring out where to put the trash, and people were charged with uh, cities filling up with the foulest smelling thing you could imagine. And so this is actually right in front of Beirut Digital District. This is where startups are. All the startups are in front of this burning pile of trash. Uh, I don't know if that's a metaphor for Silicon Valley, but um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, I, I love San Francisco. I've lived there for a long time. Good people. Um, but so this is the stuff that I was facing. And so initially, you know, when you come with this really empowering idea that we can make anything, we're going to get together into communities and build the future, uh, you kind of ask yourself, what are we going to make? Especially when it's physical, especially when it's hardware. We're at the Open Source Hardware Summit. And so. What happened was last year, I got uh, invited by the Noaya Network. It's a group of women, actually I'm the only man in the entire office, uh, who are working on bringing an innovation lab into the refugee camps. 
So I gave my talk a couple years ago. I was in a Syrian refugee camp trying to bring alternative education, and I talked about how much I failed at it and how much uh, misery I felt after my school got bombed and the girls died that I was working with, and how I had no idea how to deal with this kind of development work, and, and I was just lost. Basically, my talk was about me being like, I can't do anything, right? I don't even know what to do anymore. I don't want to make anything. And they were like, no, let's try again. And so I decided to come back to Lebanon and work with the Noaya Network and these happy, beautiful, smiling people to take DIY and open source methodologies into uh, refugees. So Lebanon has 1.5 million Syrians that just came over. They have a giant border. They don't really know how to close it. And so Syrians come in, surprise. And they have about half a million Palestinians that came over since the crisis more than 50 years ago. And where do you think the Syrians go? Into these refugee camps. This is what DIY infrastructure looks like. So, no, I'm serious. This is 50 years of, of development and people working on creating uh, internet, waterways, uh, codes for buildings. And that young man over there in the middle on the bottom, uh, you can see that kid. He actually was electrocuted last year because of this. And this are, these are the, the tubes. And so all of these people, the Syrians, the poor Lebanese people that uh, can't afford the middle of the city, the, uh, the Palestinians, they've all converged into what has become a slum, in essence. It's called Burj al Barajna, but I also called it my second home for about a month when me and Nawaya were running our programming in this uh, place. And this is why people get electrocuted. You can see the water runs parallel with the electricity, and basically the walls become electrified especially in the winter when it rains. So people are just like, doo, 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 walking around, wearing their tank tops, brushing against the wall, and then are electrocuted, which is a terrible thing. And so one of the problems that the youth brought up, this is one of the youth, his name is Mohammed. he's one of my favorite people. He became sort of like my right-hand man, and uh, he's uh, one of the youths that we wound up working with in these camps, and his dream is to be an inventor. He was telling me, like, one day I thought to myself, how do we stop metals from rusting? And, and these are the questions he asks himself because they're problems that he's facing. And do you know why he asks himself this question? You know what? Literally, at this moment, I just figured out why he asked that question. Because all of the water in the refugee camp is... Rusty? What water does what? It's salty! It's freaking salty water! You go to the tap. So one day I was in the refugee camp. I was about to wash up for prayer, right? So I'm sitting there, I'm washing up. And then I put a little bit of the water in my mouth. And I was like, what is this? The water is salty. People, you know, a fish doesn't know it's wet. The youth, when you ask them, like, tell us about problems in your camp, and they say electrocutions because people die. But they don't say, we're bathing in salt water. You know, imagine you went swimming in the ocean and you could never wash. That's what it's like. And so this is Mohammed, and he was, he was wondering about how do I be an inventor? How do I solve this problem? And so I do two things. One, I do four things, at least. But in Lebanon, I work on this uh, innovation and prototyping with uh, refugees, Palestinians, Syrians, and marginalized Lebanese people. But I also like making stuff as examples for uh, what we do with our creative potential. And I want to try addressing some serious challenges. And so when I saw the water getting poisoned, actually, what happened with me is this. So I, last year, I came up with this idea called See, Feel, Do to answer the question of when we can make anything, what do we make? And, and you guys feel free to, to do this. It uh, starts with seeing. You can draw it on your arm or your hand. It's an, it's an eye. And then you draw a heart, and that's for the feel. And then the do is represented by your hands. And so when I was in the camps, I tasted that water. And at home, what happened with me was the government, since 2006, was not able to provide water because of the war damaging the water infrastructure. And so, I was bathing with half a liter of water in a bucket in the shower, and I thought to myself, this is ridiculous because uh, this is the water infrastructure, but this, this is my rooftop. So you see what we have over there is a giant sea. I don't know if you can see it. This is actually the view from my house, and I have some rooms available if anybody wants to come visit, for sure. Uh, that's a giant sea, and then these tanks are also really cool because the way that people solve their water problem after the, the, the water pipes are damaged in the war, they started getting shipped water. So somebody would go find a well or something that was clean enough and bring a big tank of water over your house. And you pour it into the basement, and then it would get pumped up, and then it would get stored in these tanks until you needed to use it. And I saw that as an ideal situation. If you see here, we have... What's, what's, what's one of the really useful things you can see in this picture? Come on, I know you guys are smart. We got, we got satellites, we got the sea. The sun, oh my god, a 
thought no one was going to see it because it's too obvious. But yes, we have a lot of freaking sunlight. And so I started working on these prototypes. I started going and I would go to the camps and I would work with the youth and I'd do my trainings in the morning and then I'd run off to the welder. The cool thing about a city being in one square kilometer with 40,000 people is that everything is in one square kilometer. So I would go over to this guy and be like, yo, bro, can you like weld me up some stuff? And I'd like literally, you know, the back of this napkin kind of sketch thing? And I'd give it to him and I'd be like, I want this. And he'd go and he'd weld it up for me and I'd take it home. And uh, initially I thought about using corrugated plastic because it was all over the place in the trash. And I thought like, what if we can make an origami water purifier that we just fold together and put glass on it and then boom. That was kind of tough, and so I decided to make it out of metal, and I started prototyping it, and I thought I was so smart, and I was doing something amazing. And then I go into class one day, and one girl comes up to me, and she's like, why do we have to buy bottled water? And I was like, Phew. and I was so happy. I was so happy to see people asking these really interesting and hard questions in the class. And so we started prototyping these water purifiers. This is... Uh, activated uh, charcoal using salt and sand and different sorts of filters and she's actually in in process right now I think she hasn't finished the third part of her training uh, which is the business development aspect of the uh, the program that I'm doing with Jemsi and Noaya and so what, what I want to do now is I, I want to continue bringing you to Lebanon I want you guys to connect to these people because what we're doing right now is we're doing the C part of C field do surprise surprise uh oh <laughs> And so this is Suheila, and I think you guys can really maybe like connect with her because she is a woman in a refugee camp, and she's a Syrian refugee who can't work because Lebanon has four million, uh, sorry, two mil, uh, two, 1.5 million Syrians, and I think a population of four million or something like that of Lebanese, and they are worried about their jobs for their young people, and so they basically say to the Syrians, you can work in agriculture, you can work in uh, construction, or you work in trash. And Suheila especially has another problem, and I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if you can see her problem, it's kind of hard to tell, but she's a woman. I know it doesn't sound like a problem, but it is. Like, especially in her context, in her situation, being a woman makes it really hard to work. And so she thought to herself, this is a great opportunity, which is one of the ways that we try to look at problems in this program. It's like, how do you look at something that sucks and think about solutions? And so she started this project to kind of like poke fun at the male-dominated uh, kind of workforce. And she said, my program is called She is Adam. And what I do is I teach women to fix electronics at home so that we can uh, employ them without having to take them out into the public and get them in trouble for running a business or f like basically make your own jobs. And that is an amazing solution. And I'm not sure exactly how to help her, but we're getting to the point where I ask you something. And... Uh, I'll let you know what I'm going to ask you in a little bit. <laughs> so this is Suheila. She's pretty amazing. How do we connect over here? Now that we've, we've connected a little bit with the story and like seeing these people, the first thing that took me to Lebanon, I'm not even Lebanese. My family is Iraqi, but I'm too scared to go there. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like I went there for a bunch of years, and then one day I think my name got on a blacklist of some people that I won't mention that I'm kind of afraid of mentioning. Anyway, so I'm not going back for a little bit. Um, but I go to Lebanon, and Lebanon's great, and it's beautiful, and it's safe enough, so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that I did was four years ago, I went and I helped set up this crew called Lumba Labs, and um, I ran a Kickstarter. Who here has backed any of my Kickstarters? <laughs> Somebody? Yeah! Okay, great! Well, this is the result of your hard work. I'm sorry for all the people that I didn't ship you t-shirts or forgot your comic or your stickers. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But what you can see here is um, Lumba Labs kicking off again four years later. We're starting our space. And if you want to connect to these amazing people in the Middle East that speak your language, both English and electronics and hardware, software, please go onto Lumba Labs on Facebook or Twitter and give them a shout out. Another organization that's doing amazing stuff that you can connect with is Alt City. Alt City is interested in helping people solve problems and run businesses, uh, especially interested in social enterprises because those are the best enterprises. Screw the word social. Pr businesses that solve problems kick a lot of butt and make a lot of money. And so I work with Alt City. And uh, this is some of the community building that we do. We take, find people that are interested in the future of education or the future of fintech or the future of uh, different sorts of uh, like green tech. And we tell them, you can organize meetings, you can build knowledge in your field of interest, and you can make awesome stuff happen. So that's Alt City that you can also connect with. One of these organizations that I work with is called Anansi. Anansi has a logo that looks like a spider web. And Anansi is the name of a spider also. But what Anansi does is, we just released it actually, if you look on uh, the, the blog, we just released a map of maps. 
So a map for all the innovation spaces, hubs, tech hubs, fab labs, uh, maker spaces, all of them all together in one place so that all of these activities that we're doing out in the world can be integrated a little bit better. And I think there have been a lot of these like get hubs for hardware and the thing that is missing is I think the personal connection and this is where I'm getting to. The gig is the global innovation gathering. This is the personal connection. This is where people get together. So in Berlin this year, you can see some of our friends from uh, over there, there's Thorok from Cairo and Jay from London and we're gonna see uh, some Samir from Palestine and these are people from all over the world and Hakim from South Sudan and they all get together and they're all running either community spaces or maker spaces uh, and hubs where people are building and sharing knowledge together. And so the hugs that I've shown you and the stories that I've told you and all of this that I'm sharing, I'm trying to let you guys see people so that you can connect to them so that we can decide to work. And some of the problems that are being faced by people that you think are very far away is coming. It's coming for, for us all. I, I don't want to sound threatening or like, oh my God, the world is ending. But like the, the challenges of water uh, scarcity and uh, the pollution that people are facing in the Middle East are the challenges of global climate change. And the populations that are being pushed out of their homes and being pushed into Europe and the rest of the world, it's coming to affect us all. And so the thing that I want like to do is I want you guys to see Ranin over there. She wants to start a photo studio for women. And I'm, I'm asking and I'm looking for anybody that wants to be a mentor. Somebody that wants to share their knowledge or their expertise. Okay, one, one weird question. Who speaks Arabic in here? Okay, we got one? Somebody halfway? Great, I already have two volunteers for mentorships. This is awesome, okay. <laughs> and then my talk wasn't done in vain. So uh, please follow all of these uh, people. And if anybody knows anybody that speaks in Arabic or is willing to try to figure out how to share our knowledge and experience, the way that we make the thing that's really hard about open source hardware is that you can't just share files and expect somebody to make it. Even Precious Plastics, who's heard of this project? It's so well documented, it's so amazing, but still I think we need hands-on education. We need people to not only share their information, but share their care, their feelings, and their support in helping basically doulas. We need open source doulas to help other people in the world birth your projects. We need to support other people. That's, that's what I wanted to bring. And please tell me if you want to be a mentor. There's a lot of um, people that we can get connected to and let's make awesome stuff happen. Boom. <laughs> last, last thing, my friend Mohammed, the guy that wants to be an inventor, um, has an awesome rap that I recorded in 360. If anybody has an Oculus or one of those Google Cardboards, come to me and we can, uh, I'll take you into the camp. I can take you virtually into the refugee camp to see what it's like to hear Mohammed rap. Uh, find me later. Thanks.